Adam Rittenberg, who covers college football uh, and college sports in general for us, is reporting that the NCAA has chosen current Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker as its next president. He will succeed Mark Emmert. Uh, here's a quick list of things I can tell you about them. Uh, Baker is 66 years old. He is finishing his second term as governor of Massachusetts. Um, at the beginning of January, he did not run for re-election. So he's, he had already decided he was moving on to something else, and this is going to be the something else. Mark Emmert is winding down a tenure that spanned 12 years. He will, um, this will be effective March 1st of this year is when Charlie Baker will take over. I will not pretend that I know a lot about Charlie Baker as the governor of Massachusetts. I, I don't have any strong thoughts on him whatsoever. Hembo did point out as we Googled him that um, if the NCAA was trying to find someone who facially resembles Mark Emmert as much as possible, they seem to have succeeded. <coughs> you could put pictures up of the two of them next to each other and you might have a hard time identifying one from the other. I will then also just quickly say, with uh, no animus whatsoever, just my honest observation, that I don't know that any person could possibly have done a worse job than Mark Emmer did as the president of the NCAA over the last 12 years. And I, I recall when he first came into that role, he came to ESPN and he sat with Mike and me, and we did a lengthy interview with him in which we talked a lot about the rules. This was long before all of the court cases that have dramatically reshaped the way the college sports function in our culture, in our, in our society. And um, he was talking all about all of the change he recognized that needed to come and to give him some time and then we could judge where things were. So I will say now we've given him 12 years. That's how long he was been in the job. And I will give him one benefit of the doubt, which is to say that he is, that job is the ultimate figurehead, which is to say he much in the same way that the commissioners of the major sports, Roger Goodell is not Robert Kraft's boss. Adam Silver is not Jim Dolan's boss. It is vice versa. And so the amount of power that you actually have is to at least some degree limited by the fact that you answer to people who have more authority than you do. I get that. And in the case of Mark Emmert, He's dealing with hundreds and hundreds of people because all of these universities, these presidents and everyone else who, uh, who and the boards of, of you know, trustees and stuff like that, they have a say in everything that goes on. So I don't know how much Mark Emmett could have done if he had desperately wanted to. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with you when you're in that job. And I will say that it is the fault of the NCAA that college sports find themselves where they are now, which is a completely rudderless um, cesspool of rampant commercialism. They have gone from zero to 160, not to 60, because they refused to do any reasonable conversation. If they had been willing, if they had been open to making reasonable adjustment to their ridiculously archaic and outdated system over the course of the last 12 years, then they would not have wound up in court as they did. They would not have gotten shellacked in court and by the government as they have. And they would not now find themselves with no control over what is going on. But let us be very, very clear. No one is in control of major college sports. There is no authority. It is being run exclusively by money. College football in particular has become another professional sport. There's no other way to describe it. Players are getting offered $5 million to transfer from one school to another. And the fault for that, if you don't like it, and I don't, don't goes directly to the people who were unwilling, who were dragged into court kicking and screaming because they wanted to fight over turkey sandwiches. I've said this a million times, but if a football player wins a game and he walks into a restaurant afterwards and they want to buy him a turkey sandwich, just leave him the heck alone. And, 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 and that is just one tiny, very ridiculously small little example of things they were unwilling to give. And as a result of not being willing to give an inch, they were forced to give a mile. I mean, in fact, they didn't give anything. A mile was just taken from them. 
And so that's where we are, and we're never going back. So again, I have always been in favor of a system that is reasonable, that compensates players, that enables players to benefit in a reasonable way. Where we are now is a system that has no guardrails. There is no system. It's not even a system. It is just the wild, wild west, and the very worst elements of it are now in complete unchecked control. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, there is nowhere, in my view, to place the blame for that besides with the people who were in charge. And at the end of the day, Dr. Mark Emmert was the person in charge. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.